Hi guys, Mr. Bennett here. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the idea of a psychotron. Now, psychotron is a really important application uh, used in medicine. Uh, basically, used to as a, as a particle accelerator to make radioisotopes. All right. So, the great thing about psychotrons is that they uh, aren't too big. They can fit in a room in a in a, in a building. Um, most of the radioisotopes that are being produced by the psychotron are short-lived, so therefore they need to be close to where you do your medical imaging. All right? So the idea is they can make them on site, inject them, and do the, the uh, MRIs and all that sort of stuff, the PET scans. And, um, and that, that certainly you know, is a really important part of that. Now, obviously, this is an application of electric fields and magnetic fields, uh, and I'm just going to show you a little demonstration first up. Now, the other thing is I've included on our, uh, on our uh, video list a particular video that I think is quite good at explaining how this thing works. Alright, so keep in mind, this is the top view, we've got a north and south pole and we have our particles going inside and outside there. So what will happen is between this area here you have a electric field which is used to accelerate the uh, proton or the electron, the charge, the charge particle, right? And then what you do is you keep changing the the polarity of this particular thing, so you have an alternating potential difference between the two Ds, right? So it's always going to be attracted to the positive. So this will go positive, negative, positive, negative, right? And so every time it goes between this gap, it's actually going to accelerate. And as you can see, obviously the faster it's going, the bigger the radius is going to be. Alright, so it's going to follow that path until it gets to a, the ultimate speed and then um, that particular electron or proton will actually be fired at the target all right, to produce a radioisotope. Um, just sort of, if you can go to, I'll go and show you this is actually how it works. Alright, so you see the charged particle is accelerating. And that's what it's going to do. It's going to keep going fast. Every time it goes through that gap, it's going to pick up energy, and then it's going to target off. All right. So we're alternating the electric field in there. All right. So that's really important part of what we're doing here. So parts of the psychotron, you need an ion source. Obviously, you're not going to just accelerate one particular particle at, at, at any time. You're going to have lots of particles going through. All right. You can have the Ds. Okay. The Ds are basically um, Big, big plates I suppose where you can have a magnetic field inside and you're going to have to do this inside a vacuum it's a really important part of doing that alright so that's that's I think uh, not a bad starting point in terms of if you watch that video which I should, I've talked about that will help you immensely when it starts to when you start to try and picture what how this all works now the essential bit like obviously when we're doing um, this stuff here is actually understanding how it all works in terms of the, the physics and that's what you have to better explain. So let's just draw the deeds very very quickly. Um, so here's my two deeds. And let's say it's got a the top plates are north and south, so that these things are going to go into the into the page. So if we're going to draw our magnetic field, uh, our magnetic field will look like this. All right, so that's signifying it's going into the page. All right, so in this section here, we have our electric field. All right, so that's our electric field. So that will act as like an electron gun continually accelerating particles through. Now, if I've got an electron, let's say we, we are using an electron, electron goes into here, it's gonna, we have to work out which direction it's gonna turn. Now, we'll actually make this a proton, so it's a positive charge, right? And so therefore we know if it's going in there, the right hand palm rule will cause this thing to, to rotate in this particular direction. All right, so that's what's gonna happen gets to this point here, the right hand palm rule will cause this thing to go around here. Right. So this is a proton, so what's going to happen is this will become a negative charge and that will become positive, the D itself. Right. 
So therefore it's going to accelerate it across. It's going to do its thing over here. And then what's going to happen with the D over here is they're going to change polarity. All right, negative and positive. And then it's going to go across here. It's going to do its bit there. And then it's going to change its polarity. And it's going to become positive and negative. So it's always going to be accelerated across that gap there. Got the idea? So that's essentially what's actually happening here. So the first thing that we have is uh, the motion in electric fields. And the motion of that basically is the electron gun. Right? So it's the potential difference that you put across the Ds will actually cause the the, the charged particle to to actually pick up a um, its velocity. Right? And the second motion that we're looking at here is the motion of charged particles in magnetic fields. Right? And so therefore um, that's what we're looking at when we're talking about the Ds. Right? So in the Ds and then we're using the right hand palm rule. Okay, so we're using the right hand palm rule to actually work out the direction of that particular charged particle. Alright, so hopefully that sort of makes sense to you. Now the next bit, obviously there's a few there's a few uh, formulas that we need to sort of work out and there's a couple of relationships that are quite important. Now when when we're talking about the magnetic field stuff, we know that the force magnetic has to be equal to the force centipedal. Okay, so we know that that's Q uh, V B. Right, sine theta. Now we're assuming that sine theta is at 90 degrees, so we're not worried about putting that in. And that's equal to M B squared on R. Right, so if we can cancel out one of these V's over here, then we can get the relationship that the radius is equal to M V over B Q. Right, so that's showing that the the radius of rotation is dependent on the mass of the particle, the velocity of the particle, the magnetic field strength, and the charge of the particle itself. 